ever tried painting with anything other than brushes? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how some cutlery can produce a really awesome painting coming up. Hi again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design and today it's all about these guys. If you've ever tried painting with anything other than brushes, it's astonishing the kind of techniques you can actually get to produce. So I've discovered that knives, forks, spoons, any form of cutlery are a really good way of substituting palette knife work. And again, if you're somebody that's looking to try and get a new style of art, Doing something like this really can help loosen up that style. So let's talk through exactly what these tools are gonna to do for this painting. So the first thing that's really handy is the spoon. This is fantastic for actually distributing paint, particularly just using the back side of it. It's always really good as well to have a cloth, guys, so that you can keep these things clean. Uh, the other great thing as well is they're much easier to clean than traditional brushes. Then we've got the knife. This acts more like an actual palette knife. Now the trick here is that you make sure you don't use the serrated edge. You wanna use the actual flat edge for when it comes to distributing paint. And that's how you're gonna get the really awesome lines, just like you would get if you were using a palette knife. Then we have the good old fork. These are fantastic for producing texture or just for doing almost like a fan brush effect, but trying to drag some lines across. So you're gonna see how we use this later on in the painting to really generate some more of a, a dynamic edge to the paint. And finally, the teaspoon, this is gonna be the main tool for actually generating the leaf effect. So this is gonna be more, uh, this is gonna be the closest thing that we're gonna use in terms of palette knife work, because that's when you're gonna get those gorgeous textured leaves coming across. So let's see how we get on. Here we go. So tools wise, we're just simply going with our basic cutlery, absolutely no brushes being used in this painting today. So you can see I've got the spoon, two spoons, fork and a knife. Colours wise guys, we're just going with the white, no black today, the cool red and yellow and I've got the cool blue and the warm blue as well. So this has been pre-primed already, so as I'm putting the paint straight onto the canvas, it does make it an awful lot easier to blend. Now the trick here, I'm actually using the back of the spoon so it actually really blends the blue in quite subtly so I'm just starting here with the warmer blue so I'm just blending this in trying to create I want a focal point in the middle where the sort of lighter area of the forest exists so I'm just going to blend the darker colors around slightly you can see the direction of the spoon I'm using as well guys I'm just putting it on in a circular fashion that's not necessarily a reflection of how I would use a palette knife, but it certainly gives a really nice texture when it comes to blending the paint together. Now I'm a big fan of actually mixing the colors onto the canvas. I just find it a lot more fluid in terms of the way I paint. So here I've just put a tiny blob of, of the cool yellow onto my spoon. <laughs> I nearly said brush. And obviously you can see that the blue is still on the back of it, so we're gonna get that natural green coming through, which is the color that I'm looking for. You'll notice it is quite a pale version. That's because the primer that I've used already is still wet. And if you've watched videos of mine before, it is so much easier if you're blending colors when you're working on a wet background, rather than using water. So this painting will use zero water. We're just literally putting the pigment straight onto the canvas. And of course that enables you to have a much truer sense of color as well, because all water does really is it just simply dilutes the paint. And we want to have some nice, bold, thick use of color today to really reflect that use of a palette knife. you have quite a lot of control. It's quite surprising how much you can control when you're using things like a spoon. Um, you'd be surprised in terms of what you can actually achieve with these colors, but you really can be very subtle when it comes to, to blending the colors together. So you can see I've just worked straight on with the cool yellow at the bottom. This is just to sort of give a, a sense of where the floor is to the, the forest itself. And I'm just gonna work on, again, mixing straight onto the canvas. So I'm working the red over this. And you can see some of that white paint again coming through. So it just tones down the color slightly. It's not too vivid. The white is the only paint I'm using to actually change the tone. So just a quick, quick 
lesson there or color theory lesson so obviously when you come into the primary colors to actually tone those levels down or to change the value that's when you add the white and the black but we're not using any black in today's painting we are just going with the primary colors and the white so I've now added some of the uh, the cooler blue so it's more of a purpley blue and of course it's already mixing into the the red and the hint of yellow if you mix all three primary colors guys you're always going to get brown so I want to be aware that I don't want to have too much brown on this at the moment so I want it to have that element of purple coming through so there's much more red and blue on this paint it's quite a dark blue which is why that's going to basically uh, cover for my lack of black later on so again keeping those same movements of the circles being quite consistent at the moment and trying to keep that lovely effect and texture we're just working in layers here guys so this is simply just the background that I'm working on at the moment you always always work with your background layer to your foreground last the amount of times I see people attempting to do a painting where they start doing the fine detail in the foreground and then they try and do the background around the detail it, it just doesn't work it makes it so much harder so you've got to think of it in terms of layers background layer first obviously put your texture on second and then any foreground detail goes on at the end so just mixing a bit more of that blue in in the middle just to be a little bit more subtle I'm not liking the way it goes from blue to white too quickly so I just want to blend that in a little bit more and it's okay that I've still got some of the dirty sort of red paint in there because it's just toning the whole thing down we don't want it to be too vibrant in terms of color just because we want it to have that lovely dusky feel and and sort of atmospheric feel to the forest itself All right, so we're done with the background. Now we're just gonna work on the foreground. So moving on to my knife. As I said in the intro, make sure when you do this technique, guys, you're using the actual back of the knife. Don't use the serrated edge because it does not distribute paint well at all. So this now literally is like a palette knife. I'm gonna use it for the same technique. So you can see I'm just dragging the paint down and you get some really lovely straight lines with this. It's great for little fine detail trees like this. So the colour I've just simply mixed the uh, the darker blue, which was which is actually the cool blue, um, with the red and the yellow. So it's actually a tertiary colour. It's a brown. It's just that the blue is so dark it almost comes out black. But there is no black in this painting. So I'm just building up the composition now. I want there the to be an element of the trees. I want to keep them at different angles as well. And I want them to be a little bit jagged. So you can see as I'm dragging the paint, I'm weaving the, the actual knife slightly because, you know, trees are not straight. They have some little kinks in them. Let's work over this one a couple of times. It's, it's sometimes this is a tricky technique. It's tricky with the palette knife as well, where you're actually dragging the paint. I've actually got the knife on a slight angle, just tilted slightly over so that it actually enables to distribute the paint a little bit easier. Now, the ones in the background, so we're going to actually try and generate a sense of, of perspective here. So I'm going to make these trees in the background thinner and slightly lighter as well. So I'm just going to put a bit more blue and white onto the knife so that I can get more of that sort of sense of distance. It's a bit like when you see mountains in the background, they look blue. Well, I'm going to add some little blue thin trees in the background here. I think I'm going to add some uh, branches in as well so I just want to try and have a bit more variety in terms of direction because at the moment they're all a little bit too straight so I'll just come here from the top just going to work this down slightly oh that didn't work let's try that one again so again it is the technique if you find that the paint isn't distributing from your knife you just need to tilt it over slightly it does make it an awful lot easier when you're putting the paint onto the canvas but as Bob Ross, bless him, would always say, there are no rules in art. 
there was no such thing as a mistake. You know, sometimes things that you intend to do don't always work out, but it's about having the confidence to just keep going and know that pretty much any mistake you do make actually can be fixed up pretty quickly. So I'm just going to add some more uh, sort of trees here in the background just to give it a little, a little bit more detail at the moment. It's just too basic, so I'm just going to try and work some different angles, different tones. It's a little bit tricky to get some of those angles, but it, it, it's really effective when it comes out. Now, fork. This is fantastic for texture. So you can see I've just loaded it up with the yellow and the and the red. And I'm just going to start working on the foreground now of the actual floor. So this is a little bit more vibrant. I will tone it down later on with some darker blues, but it's just to give that contrast to the, the bluish background. But it also gives a sense of composition as well so you can see how the ground of the forest almost curves it's just again contributing to that sense of perspective to the painting just be aware as well you you can make your lines too parallel when you're using a fork you want to keep moving the wrist so that you get some jagged lines so just working back with the spoon here adding that dark blue as I said earlier so it really generates almost a, a black color but I'm just trying to give a sense of shadow now coming from the trees and again, it's just contributing to that sense of composition, almost framing the side of the painting. It's actually, uh, just looking at the screen here, is uh, through the camera, it's actually quite tricky to tell, but I am using the back of the spoon, not the front. I think it'd be quite a struggle to try and distribute the, the actual paint. You, when you try this, you'll know what I mean. Uh, the back of the spoon works really, really well. But it does look, when I'm looking up at the screen here on my camera, that I'm using the front, it really is the back. So again, I'm just working some of those colours a little bit higher up to blend them in. And now we're just going to work with the, the very last fine detail, which is, of course, the leaves. I've actually just switched out spoons here, but if you want to, you can always use a cloth because um, you want to keep that spoon clean. So I'm just working straight on with the yellow with a bit of red. You'll notice I'm loading up all the time. What you will find is because the paint is wet, you can actually end up dragging some of that background paint off. So make sure you've got loads of pigment on the back of your spoon and it will also leave these natural sort of leaf shape blobs on your canvas. So I don't want it to just be yellow, I want to keep it mixed up, so keep adding some white in there. Try and change up the angle as well with your wrist. Just going to put a little bit of blue here to create some more green, a bit more of a natural colour. I think I need to turn some of these down here. Yes, a little bit of white will just work quite nicely as I'm working into the centre because I don't want to lose that, that lovely bluish colour as I'm working into the middle where let's say the sun or the moonlight is in the middle. So I'm just very subtle now with some of the marks just to break up that background texture. trickier when you're trying to do the smaller leaves it's much easier for the larger leaves I think it's just I'm actually not putting enough paint it gets a bit better again I want to have a little bit more white in the middle I think So just being very subtle now with those hints of leaves, giving that element of texture. Yeah, it definitely works best when I'm working the white in the centre, it's just much more subtle. So 
again, always have a tissue to hand, guys, because sometimes your colours are going to get too muddy. So I want to go back to the yellow now just to add some extra little detail leaves with that little bit of red through it as well, which is quite nice. Almost like an autumn feel. And the hardest thing with any painting is knowing when to stop. And I think we're pretty much there. This last couple. And there you have it. Autumn Forest done by Cutlery. So there you have it guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video on how to reproduce a palette knife technique, but just basically using some simple knives and forks. If you have enjoyed the video today, then do hit that subscription button just below, as it really does help our channel if you give us a like and a thumbs up as well. And if you'd like to see some more weekly top tips, just like this one, we do upload videos every Wednesday and Saturday guys, then do hit that notification bell just below so you know when we're coming back online. Alrighty guys, we'll see you next time. Happy painting.